Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Friday webinar. Um, today we are on with uh, Lisa Bono. Welcome, Lisa. Hello. Hi. And wait, what's our topic today? We're going to talk about grays and hormones. Actually, I think it'll be a, a fitting for, for every parrot species, right? We're talking about hormones today, which is um, just in line with the, uh, the spring season that's upon us just about here. So, and Lisa, I believe you have a presentation oh, yeah. to, to share with us. Yes. All right. Yes, I do. Um, um, and then if we I'm just trying to get the speakers down. Okay. And just a reminder, uh, if we have time for questions towards the end, just um, if you're new with us uh, joining us, that to use the Q and A button feature and not the chat feature. If you have a question for for Lisa at the end of the presentation, um, and I can see your uh, so you're working on your your sound right <laughs> as we. <laughs> So, um, yeah, well, I, I still, still see everybody across the top. I'm just trying to get everybody minimized. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, well, hey, here's a show of hands. Why don't you like a, a, a let me see if that feature will work. I was just curious. How's that? How, how did everybody and their birds adjust to this, uh, the time change? If you live in an area where you, where you had a spring forward, um, I know for, for my family, it was a brutal, brutal start to the week. We didn't quite plan well enough as far as our schedules go. So it was a, it was a sleepy week for over in my parts here. Um, just wondering if anyone noticed any differences with, with maybe their flock, like birds waiting for, uh, you know, not ready to get up yet. <laughs> we are waiting for a storm here. So everybody was a little bit more quiet than usual. Oh man. Okay. Someone said it takes their, uh, their, their guys a couple of days. That was from Adrian. Um, and after that, they're fine with it. Yeah. Um, all right. How's our how's our screen looking? All right. Oh, someone in the UK says they have another week to go until there. <laughs> and again, we got comments on your beautiful setup, and and it is. It is really. It it, it looks like springtime in your living room every time we, we join you or, or your bird room. <laughs> yes, we we try to keep it nice and bright in here, nice and happy and healthy. So, all right. Just let me know when you're ready. Oh, we're ready. I'm going to let you take it away. Thank you very much. Here we go. Ah, wait a minute. Why is this not working? Okay. All right, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for being part of the presentation today and joining in. Today we're gonna to talk about grays and hormones. Does my bird love me too much? We all, every bird species goes through their little thing, you know, once a year and we really have to learn how to deal with it and how to handle it properly. So we're gonna talk about the hormonal gray, excuse me. What are the first signs of hormones? How can I address this? Can the way I handle my gray really affect his or her hormones? Or is, and is it important to know the sex of my gray? First off, I have to introduce you to my most little hormonal gray. <laughs> if you can see him behind me, um, up in the corner, that is Sterling. And he is my little boy who's going to be 40 and very interested. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, I'm just getting over being sick. Very interested in the other girls. So our optimum environment <clears throat> for breeding season. Scientists have proven that overabundance of foods, high fats and calories, and too many food choices can all lead to an increase of production and reproductive hormones which can turn on your bird's reproductive desires and lead to related behaviors. In the wild, hormones are usually turned off and it's only when an optimum environment presents itself that we see parrots mate. In our homes, we have an abundance of food, safe environment, a lot of bonded owners with physical contact that is very confusing and misleading to the parrot. In addition to having 
no environmental pressures such as predators, poor foods, rainy seasons, all those kinds of things. So our birds tend, <coughs> tend to be constantly turned on. Here we have a very um, simple uh, chart I drew up. <coughs> I'm gonna have to get up and get a cough drop. It's a nice little drawing there. Um, especially I like the, the happy egg. <laughs> I am very sorry, but I don't want to That's, We're just admiring your artwork. <laughs> there in the end. I don't want anybody to laugh, but I am not an artist. So in our homes, we have abundance of food, good health, secure environment, companionship, the perfect environment to raise a family, which leads to hormonal behaviors, and then the happy little egg. <clears throat> so what are the first signs of hormones? And I am going off of my own flock. Now this is Snooky <coughs> down in the corner. And I'm gonna let you read this so I don't fall. <laughs> now this is what I've noticed in my own flock. It can go in any of these real, um, <clears throat> in, in any order, but this is what I noticed the most with mine. There's a definite difference between a baby huffing and puffing versus an adult with hormones. Now we have Sam, the first bird, which is over there playing with a toy. <coughs> I sincerely apologize. I don't think so. Sam is playing with a little ball. Now that is a bird that is actually having fun. Um, I don't see any behaviors with hormones there. There you have um, Mr. Wu over to the right of the screen. And he is showing classic signs or being very hormonal. And then you have Kai in the middle, who's starting his little flirting dance. The average hormones on a, 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 for a gray are going to kick in around five. So if you have a baby who is, you know, two and three, and they're huffing and puffing, and they seem very excited, over-exaggerated with their moves, that's not necessarily hormones. It's just a baby trying to express itself and really doesn't know. I see a lot of people online with babies that are between one and two doing this huffing, moving their wings all over the place. And people are like, oh, it's hormones. No, it's not. It's just a baby trying to express himself, overexcited, wanting to play. He's still learning life. So here we have Joey. And he is self-soothing. Wow. Is, that, is that playing for anybody? Is it a video? Yeah, it's a video, but it's not not playing for me. Oh, wait. There we go. There we go. <clears throat> Oh, he's doing the, yeah. Now, so he was in the middle of getting a scratch and he decided to do it himself. So he was self-soothing, getting the spots done that he needed. Here we have Nova. And Nova is performing a chicken scratch. Now, all grays do this. All ages do this. Both genders do this. Both Tim and Congo do this. Now, in regards to hormones when they're doing this, if you see them in a dark spot or in 
um, a box or something like that, that could be hormones. And they use this behavior during, you know, their adult lives to build nests and to keep nest clean when babies are present. So here you go, Nova. And I had to do very short little videos in order to send them to my phone to upload them to the page. All right. So I'm pretty sure we've all seen this. And babies, again, we'll have little babies, you know, a couple months old, they're sitting in their enclosures and they're scratching and people are like, oh, it's hormones. No, it's not. It's just a behavior that they know. And baby's just doing it. Maybe he thinks he's going to get out, but they all do it. Now we have birds that may be seeking out nesting areas. Here we have Savannah. Savannah looks like she's in a sink. Yes. And somebody tried to cover the sink. So they're very good at getting little spots. So Savannah is on the move because here she is in the cabinet. And she knocked all the toilet paper rolls out of there to get in there because she's seeking a nesting spot. Here you have Max going in the linen closet. And I have to admit, this is a pretty smart place because it does look very comfortable. So they will seek out these spots. Here's Gracie in a hut. That may be a cat hut because um, it looks a little big, but anywhere that's dark can be received as a nest. Even here, Abby, she's in a blanket. Here we have Rocket and Pedro. And this picture's up here for two different races. One, both these birds are male, just so you know. And also, I like the setup with these, the cage top there. You notice, instead of having that metal tray that's dark and blocks maybe the full spectrum lighting you have, my friend Colleen has the plastic, uh, the acrylic up here, and she has it cut and zip tied to the cage to simulate that metal tray. I think that's an excellent opportunity. Or, or an idea. And as far as opportunities, like I said, these, these two are boys and they have a pretty close relationship. Very often, both males and females will pluck around the neck. During my years at my store, I would have people come in, you know, late September, early October with concerns of plucking in this general area. It was too much of a coincidence and too many of my clients coming in not to document it. Of course, everybody was sent to go in to the vet to make sure nothing's underlying. And it all came back that all were breeding age, all plucked in the same area, the same time of year within days, year after year. And I would say that probably a good 75% or more of my clients had grades. Little known fact, when a hen is in breeding mode, she will drink a lot more water. So of course her poop will be more watery. A lot of people aren't prepared for that. Usually the morning poop, if they're starting to nest, that will be extremely watery. And that'll also be scary for people to see who are not aware of it. So here we have Bogart giving us a stink eye. I really don't think he's in, in you know, breeding mode here, but he's, he's definitely serious about something on his mind. So his picture was perfect. So these are advanced um, signs that for hormonal behaviors in your birds. Screaming, you may have a dramatic increase in vocalizations due to them calling out to a potential mate. They do that in the wild. They call attention to themselves. They do displaying. Your voice has to be carried through jungles and you know, so they can get very loud. Feather destructive behaviors. Over time with over preening and plucking, they can damage the feather follicles. So this is, they usually do this to feather their nest. Displaying. Some birds are a little bit more dramatic with their displaying, like maybe a cockatiel or even an Amazon. Uh, more frequent eye pinning, regurgitation, and displays of wing drooping or tail rubbing, biting. 
usually a sweet bird, suddenly starts to bite. They become a little bit more territorial, meaning they become protective over their cage, their toys, potential mate, and might be their favorite human until the mating season is over. Now, I learned a very hard lesson when I was young with my cockatiels. They decided they were going to have babies. And I had very hand tamed, sweet baby or, or birds. You know, I had since babies. I went in one day, not realizing she had an egg. I went in one day to clean her cage and she came out of her little box that I thought was right to do that I gave her. And she came out and latched onto my finger and I, she ended up breaking my nail underneath the cuticle and it took months to grow out. And it was a horrible, you know, horrible pain um, because it was wide open and split right down the middle. So, and that was from a cockatiel that was hand tame. And as soon as she was done, she went back to being her normal self. So I could always tell when she started acting a little funky, make sure you really watch where she is in that cage because I didn't want to go through that again. So in breeding situations, they start really chewing on wood. This can be their toys. Um, they can be shredding toys more and they can go through a two by four in just a few days. So it's been said that chewing stimulates the breeding mode. And if you think about it, when they're building a nest in the wild, they really got to make that soft little spot for the babies. So again, I want it noted that these two, they're having fun. Uh, it's Shiloh and Patriot. Shiloh's in front, Patriot's in the back. And they're also two boys. So they're having fun building their little nest, doing what they did in the wild. So issues that can occur from constant st stimulations and hormones. You have constant screaming, okay? Again, they're trying to call a mate. They're not getting their needs met. They're going to be vocal. We're not going to like it. Now, that's Emma. She was not actually screaming at the time. She was just stretching, and she just looked so cute. Um, and this is Sydney, the feather follicle damage. Now, he used to be all gray in there. But he has an issue with pulling out his feathers and it's right in that spot you can see. It's an easy spot for him to grab. He's had all his tests multiple times. He's knocked up. He doesn't have anything wrong. He just has a little bit of mental, mental stimulation going on there that uh, anxiety separation issues. So with him pulling out all those feathers all the time you can see his red feathers come in now that's not always normal if they damage it too much you could have a naked little spot so problems that can occur from always being in stimulation mode is egg binding this is a pretty dangerous situation i've been in plenty of presentations that discuss this I have females, it always concerned me. So I am extra cautious of what I allow my birds to do and where they are allowed to go. I might be the only person in the world who's never offered a box to my, my graves because I don't want the issue. I have three girls in this room and I have two boys and they're all from age 19 240 and, and Sterling, who's 40, is the most active and most interested. So although bird laying an egg may be seem like a normal behavior, which it is in the wild, um, they need to repopulate their species. Parrots are not little chickens, and laying eggs can be a very dangerous habit. You have your sun conures, you have your cockatiels, your lovebirds, which will go into chronic egg laying um, more than, than the African gray. Um, but this can lead to numerous medical and behavioral issues such as infection, prolapses, weak bones, aggression, egg binding, and more. So there are steps we can take to help prevent egg laying. But first, we need to understand the triggers that lead to unwanted re 
productive behavior. So here are a couple different types of prolapses. And um, I didn't want to get into very graphic pictures because we don't really need to see that. Um, but you need to be aware. So the females, we have the uterine prolapse and we have the oviductal prolapse. So both of those can be a, a very dangerous, life-altering you know, situation. Um, so you do have to be very careful. Egg binding and prolapse are symptoms and visual clues that more that is, is going on that an issue with maybe calcium or something like that, um, improper diet, that's something, you know, if you ever see, you need to go immediately to your vet. Is it important to know the sex of your breath? Absolutely. So the reason I say that, all my guys have been DNA'd. Um, you have Sophie to the left, who is obviously a little girl, and we have Thumper to the right, who is a male. Now, should something happen with your bird and you go to the vet, right off the bat, they're gonna wanna know if they're having an issue, is it male or female? If you don't know and you can't say, they don't know if your bird is egg bound. So right off the bat, we know Thumper will never be egg bound. We can move past that and keep going because when your bird is sick, it's, it's absolutely imperative to find out what's wrong as quickly as you can. So fun fact little two here, this is actually Abigail and hens may also sport a little brood patch which is right down here on her belly. She has had that since day one of her being here. She was actually pretty plucked. Um, didn't have wing feathers or tail feathers till she came here. Um, and to this day, she's damaged it so much right in there that the feathers don't grow. Now it looks worse than it does because that's um, right down the keel bone and there are no feathers directly on each side of the keel bone, but out from that, there are feathers that actually go towards the middle and cover the keel bone. But she'll always have that little brood patch because she's ruined the feather follicles there. Now, another reason it's important to know if you have a male or a female is because people don't realize this, males can also have prolapses. So if you have a bird that's straining too much um, or sexually frustrated constantly and pushing, he can have a cloacal prolapse and that is very dangerous. Males and females can both have it. So when people talk about that and they say, well, my hen's pushing, you know, must be a girl. Nope, um, males have it too. So here is actually my Sterling and he was presented at the vet last year um, for favoring his left leg and kind of squatting or laying on the perch. Uh, he was very cautious about stepping up on it. I thought he improved after two days, but he was limping back and he walked. So he was very cautious, went to walk, turning around on a perch. He didn't want to. Um, the grip on the left foot was not as strong as the right. Uh, he seemed to have, to have started a little feather picking in the area. This is all stuff you should write down when you present him to the vet so your vet knows. After x-rays, we did find he had some arthritis in his hip joint, but we also have this little circular area here where his testes are enlarged. And again, he has three pretty girls here he's interested in. Um, and typically the testes on males are not visual on x-rays because they're usually up more into the spine. So we know here he was also a little frustrated sexually. Um, so that was some of the issues with him. He has since recovered. We have him on um, some joint medicine and you know, when he starts to slow down or act funny again, I try to keep him farther away from the girls. I, you know, I kind of relate it to that frustration. So we try to eliminate it to the best of my ability. 
this usually the breeding for African greys starts here in the United States. They start searching for a mate in September. So you're going to you're going to see more of the behavior start. Maybe the screaming, a little bit of plucking, the, the acting out, the searching, the nesting um, in September. Usually they find a mate and breeding starts in October. The eggs are laid in November and they usually, you know, November, early December, then they usually have Uh oh, are you there, Lisa? I think you're, I think you're frozen there, Lisa. Um, shoot, I think our connection got a little bit uh, delayed here. Um, we'll wait till, we'll wait till, <laughs> Lisa, can you hear me? Oh, shoot, okay. Um, all right, it looks like we, we lost Lisa for a moment. Um, and, she was uh, under severe storm warnings. Remember, <laughs> she warned us. So yeah, we're hoping so, she did not completely lose power and internet, but that may be what's going on here. Okay. Yeah. It looks like so. Unfortunately, <laughs> ah, it looks like uh, Lisa has some weather um, challenges in our area that might be affecting her her feed here. So um, let's let's hope that let's let's hope that she gets reconnected. Um, all right. Well, um, that's yeah, that's a first for our webinars. But you know, that's 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 why we do these things. You never know what's going to pop up. Hopefully, do, hopefully do we have a video pop. of Arroyo's latest antics? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, you know what? I actually have uh, my hormonal bird. Uh, I'm going to call it my nightmare story. Um, years ago, and I think Liz Liz Wilson covered this in a bird talk. Uh, magazine, um, one of her columns, she did the parrot psych column. And I told her this at a bird conference. And then lo and behold, it's like I'm the um, the subject of her column, but not named. So now I'm the name. I, now I'm going to come forward. That was me. But what happened was I was driving with my Amazon, my double yellow head, and I had just taken in a Nande Conyer, Ollie, and I had them, uh, I was going, I think I was going to uh, parrot fest. I was going to a, a parrot festival and I was dropping them off um, at a relative's house to watch for the week. And usually with my Amazon, I could just reach back when, when he's in his carrier and kind of, uh, you know, give him scratches on his, on his cheek. Cause he, that would kind of, he, he liked that when in, on our drives kind of calm him down. And I didn't realize his carrier being right next to the Nandes on the floorboard. Um, he had a crush, I think on the Nande because I put my hand behind me while I'm driving to just give him a little quick screech, uh, cheek scratch and he latched onto my finger and I couldn't move my hand back up onto the steering wheel. So I had one hand, the steering wheel, one hand uh, in a vice death grip by my Amazon parrot, just tearing into my finger and I'm at his mercy because I can't do anything. I, and fortunately I was near a, um, like a parking lot that I could quickly pull into but I literally could not release my hand from his grip as I was driving. I thought it was just gonna be a quick little, you know, scratch on the cheek and oh, I was wrong. <laughs> and so, and so I was able to, I had to stop the car, like contort my body around and use my other hand to physically pry his, his beak from my finger, which was now swollen and bleeding. And his eye, you know, if I had been able to see his body language, I would have known right away, like his eyes are pinning. He was, you know, very instantly caught the, hit the Nandy on the floor next to, on the, the carrier next to him. I didn't sense any of this because I was just driving like usual with him. Um, anyways, so I learned a very big lesson, you know, I went to get it checked. It was just uh, no broken bones, but I had a, my, my, my pinky finger was the one that took, it was like swollen and everything. Um, so anyways, that was my hard lesson is uh, sometimes to pay attention uh, to the body language as well, like when they're around other birds, because uh, I had no idea that he had this um, hormonal uh, crush on my, um, on my nanny. So anyways.
that was a hard lesson to learn. I did learn though that when you go into an ER, an urgent care, I'm sorry, an urgent care, and you write down um, your reason for being there is that you got um, you got bit by an Amazon. They immediately send you to the front of the line because they have no idea what that means. And to them, it sounds very exciting. So I immediately went to the top of the list. I got seen by the doctor right away. Uh, everyone else in the weight room because um, they were just so enthralled with my story. So that's my takeaway. Um, all right. Yeah. I, so. <laughs> um, oh, yes. And someone asked. Um, I actually. Thank goodness when this happened, my car was an automatic because if it was a stick shift, I would have like been stalled in the lane of traffic. <laughs> it was like, yeah. So um, I guess with why what I'm saying too is also with your birds in your car, you just got you, you you know you never know what can happen. So hopefully, um, you learn from your mistakes and uh, and not pet your hormonal bird in the back seat when you're driving. Um, all right, uh, let's see. So. Um, Hmm. Let's see if we can try to get a hold of Lisa. This is such an interesting and um, important um, topic that we want to cover. And uh, we did cover something kind of similar with uh, Dr. Lamb with some of the the, the vet specific parts of um, hormonal behavior in our uh, a previous webinar. I think it was the the one at the beginning of March. So um, also just a reminder that all of our webinars are on the YouTube channel and you can see all of our past and, and presence. Oh, okay, here we go. So we got the uh, the lowdown from, from Lisa. Um, she says, like, she can't seem to get on the internet. Um, she's got nothing. So this is a, uh, a first actually for, we've been doing these webinars for a couple of years now. Um, this is this is our, our first uh, internet flatline. So, um, gosh. Uh, Let's see here. Um, as we, I'm just gonna as as we cross fingers there. Um, that let's see. I'm gonna play this this video of of a royal. I just talked about uh, Dr. Lamb um, with her her video. Uh, I'm gonna do a screen share. Bear with us. Oh, oh that's not it. Uh, this is this is live um, webinar for you. Um, Okay, let me let me let me screen share at least uh, our video for a, uh, of a royal because who doesn't like seeing a, a royal? Oh, hey, someone, yeah, maybe we'll see if um, if Lisa can send the um, PowerPoint to me. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's possible. We might have to revisit this webinar, which is a um, which is interesting. Okay, um, sorry, I apologize for the technical. Yeah, she doesn't have any internet. This is a, uh, okay. Let's, okay, let me do my screen share of the Royal video. Okay. So Arroyo got a new bag of, oops. There we go. So Arroyo There's got Arroyo. a new bag of pellets. And I was going to film him with this new bag of pellets, but I had stepped away for a little bit, just for a moment. And when I came back, Arroyo was not on his tree stand the way that he was supposed to be. And instead he was over here on my desk where the pellets were. And you can see that he helped himself already. He chewed a nice hole in the side of the bag and got some pellets out and turned them into dust. So I think that um, Arroyo did a very good demonstration here of what he thinks about these particular pellets. And, you know, I didn't get to film him the way that I might have liked, but that's okay because he just showed himself to the bag and uh proved that these pellets are pretty good so <laughs> there we go that was so, a royal fruit. so i'm actually going to comment on the body language that we were watching we might want to okay. watch it again and give people a chance to notice it this time arroyo is doing very typical amazon um like distracting or diversion type body language 
he knows that she's talking about him. He very well knows it. But if you watch him, he's doing everything but acknowledge her. He's chewing on his foot. He kind of grooms himself. He walks away and hides behind the bag. And then she comes oh. around the bag and then he's like, oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to groom some more. But if you watch his eyes, it totally gives away what's going on because they're pinning. So he's clearly listening to everything she's saying. Ah. And then at the very end, he just can't help himself. And he reaches down and grabs a bite of pellet. Yeah. So Brenda, that's Brenda. I'm going to, uh, maybe I'll play that video again without the, without the, um, the, the voiceover by Dr. Lamb, and then you can walk us. Okay, let's let's okay, see. Hang on one sec. It's a great um, example of, of of any any parrot body language, but this is just such perfect Amazon. You know, let let me try to divert you for and show that I'm not listening to you. But his eyes give him away. It's like, I say that about dogs; the tail will always give them away. Like horses, their ears give them away. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's see. So walk us through this again. So here's our mischievous uh, Amazon. Okay. Arroyo. So he's looking, you know, he's looking at it right now. He's like, okay, okay. I'm in trouble. I'm just going to turn around here and make sure go away. <laughs> I'm going to pretend to be looking at something else. Oh, let me chew my foot here. <laughs> Cause I'm not, I'm not going to pay attention to mom. I'm going to chew my nail. This needs a little work on this toenail, but look at that eye. Look at that eye. It's pinning. Say, so, okay, well, I bet I could hide back here and then I don't have to address this so so he he's looking for a way to get away you know he don't want to get in trouble uh, but, uh the camera keeps following him he's like i didn't do it all right you, you, you know look, look at this mess he's like hey it wasn't me it wasn't you know so so now he thinks oh perfect okay she she fell for it i'm just gonna stay back here keep a low profile maybe <laughs> see what she's doing oh she's got nothing to okay. see here so, well, I, I'm going to groom myself. I'm not going to, I'm, uh, you know, but let's see the eye right there. The eye just gives it away, that pinning eye. Huh. So, but he's got to have a bite of pellet. <laughs> just, you so, know, and like the, you know, you see all those, those videos of dogs who are found, you know, like they they chew something up in the house and then the owner comes in and say, did you do that? And the dog just looks like guilty as heck, you know? Right, right, right. Birds are a little, <laughs> little bit more like, ah, I, didn't, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> there was this pellet testimonial, the pellet one in the end <laughs> there you go oh my goodness yeah that's that's <laughs> very very yeah that's you, you peg that right there and <laughs> someone's like yeah diffusing the situation look away human <laughs> so exactly um, exactly you know what maybe we'll have to um psychoanalyze all of her royals food videos that he does for the fever because he has different approaches you know depending on whether you know he's gonna have to forage for it or if he discovers the package before before Dr. Lamb has a chance to even present it to him. It's, um, exactly. We know what, we'll have to set up a spy camera on Arroyo and see how he, he makes well, his you way. You know, the, this, this entire thing started from him stealing food off her desk in the same manner. She had, got, she had bought food at the pet store and she was doing something else and she came back and it was, I think it was our new tropical pellets. And she came back in the room and he had opened the bag and was eating them. <laughs> so she sent us the video, just ha ha, this is funny. And then we said, I wonder if Arroyo would like to start testing our product of the month. Yeah. Because, you know, we certainly have to show that, that birds love it before we give it away. Yeah. So, yeah. and you know what, we could do the uh, giveaway. Let's just do the giveaway early. Um, Lisa said, give her a few more minutes. And if they don't have it um, um, sorted out, we'll just, we'll just reschedule. Okay. That sounds good. So what, what are we giving away? We're giving away the pellets, right? Yes, we're going to give away the La Fever uh, daily diet pellets, the daily diet one um, that could be fed as a main diet or uh, as a supplemental. And, and then also another La Fever product of your bird's choice. So, okay. So that's going to Ellen McKinney this week. Ellen, you Woo! are the giveaway winner today. And we'll contact you on Monday about that. All right. Congratulations. Hopefully, I'll make you and your birds uh, weekend. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll just have to, I, we, we've had videos of, of, um, set to, for the, uh, the, uh, for the Lefebvre channel of, of, I think remember one specifically, it was these, uh, I think they're Conyers, Sun Conyers, opening up the, um, the tub of Nutriberries on their own or opening up. Oh yeah. Of, the little green cheek Conyers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that was amazing. They're able, I mean, I have a hard time opening up uh, Tupperware sometimes and, and, and they're just like prying it open like, uh, 
they're they're the uh, working in unison to get that 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 top popped off so they can get to the nutri bears <laughs> oh okay. look, daughter, she's back ding dong there we go all right lisa you joined us you're back <laughs> see if you got audio oh you gotta unmute it now we gotta start from the beginning or start like we, yeah there we go all right I hey. don't know what happened there. Um, I apologize. We can do a re-recording of this afterwards if you like. Um, so you know, I amazingly, everyone stuck with us. Like we had, we didn't lose viewers. I mean, because you never know if you're coming back. I mean, that was so. Thank you, everyone. Well, yes. Thank, thank you very much, everyone. I hear the thunder, so it must be as you know that storm we're waiting on. So let me get back to where we were at. Okay. Um, do uh, you know what slide I was, where I cut off? I don't know when I lost you. Uh, I, I'll pull it up. Yeah, I'll tell you if it was. Okay. Uh, let's see what's going on here. Uh, hold on. Uh, it's not giving me the spot to share. Do you have to add me back in again? I believe I did, but I will make you yeah okay uh i made you a co-host so you should be able to, to share your screen i don't see let me see gallery no i don't see where i can share oh, screen. someone did remind add that you were on what we need to be aware of thank you eva for letting us okay um i don't have any way to share a screen really hmm um Yes. I have stop uh, video and leave. It looks like I'm just watching. Oh, okay. I could. Hmm. Let me see if. Let me see something. Okay, we'll have to get the. <laughs> we, this is. We're charting new territory here. Um, we're getting advice. I, I I appreciate all the. Let's see. Yeah, you might. So did you? Um, I, I, you don't have a co-host. I don't have a co-host. Uh, okay. Is there a way that you can, um, like log back in? Oh, we have an I. Okay. Someone has said, Janet, thank you. Uh, I that you may be signed in twice. She's okay. in IT, so she knows what she's talking about. Probably. Yep. Um. Actually, I think we were on her slide when I. <laughs> Let me leave and try rejoining again because okay. I, I don't have any. All right, here we go. <laughs> it's always great to have an I. You know, if you if there's one person you need, to, you need in your life now is an IT person because of all the people. You know, when you work from home and stuff, you don't have some. You're, you're defaulted to being your own IT person oftentimes, and that is a scary place sometimes. So, um, let's see if that works. I appreciate. <laughs> Oh, someone, that's great. Someone said I do the screenshots of all the slides. There we go. Um, that would definitely keep us on pace on where we are. Okay, let's see if Lisa comes back. Um, and uh, let's see, let's hope for the best. Well, hey, I have a question for everyone. Um, does does everyone on this webinar do do you all know if your if your uh, birds are male or female? Um, oh wait, there we go. Lisa's back. Okay, we've had people test their birds. Okay, gotta unmute Lisa and yes, that was a great solve because now I can make you co-host and now okay, it looks like most people know what their birds are. That's great. All right, so let's see. I still don't. Uh, oh, let me see this button. Uh, now it's saying I can only share my screen with host and panelists. Um, you want to, hmm. Let's see. Do you want to try that? And then I can. Share screen. Oh, wait, what's this? Hold on. Can you see that? I can see it. Um, let's see. The big question is, can everyone see her screen? Everyone, can you see Lisa's screen? Yes. Okay. 
<laughs> yes, everyone can see your screen. So it looks like we're we're good. I got a thumbs up. There we go. All right, excellent. Yay. Thank you, because right. this is actually Janet's setup here. So oh, hey. Of course um, she's gonna remember that. <laughs> so um what do we need to be aware of? We need to be aware of where your bird is allowed to play. Is it searching out a confined or dark spot? What you are allowing them to play with? Um, have you offered them a little ball or a foot toy and are they sitting on it or trying to climb and have fun with it? Um, and are you extending their normal days and adding light in? Increased light means longer days in the wild. That means time to have babies. And what foods are you offering? Another thing is dried fruits and a lot of these mixes signifies the rainy season is over and it's time to breathe. So when your bird starts acting hormonally, you have to think about some of these things um, and how you can apply it to your situation. Now, Janet's photo here, um, I think it is a wonderful photo because if you look, it's actually coffee boxes. This is a great foraging idea. It looks to be on our kitchen counter. Our little red belly kabuki's down here in the corner. Um, so he is looking for a dark spot, um, but he hasn't really shown any other nesting behavior. But this, with the picture here, looks like it might be set up for her, uh, her gray. And considering that these are smaller boxes, and if you look, she's got so much stuff filled in each one of these boxes. If it's out of the breeding season, I think that would be a fabulous foraging idea for you to somehow set up even if it's only four boxes or five boxes, I know I'm gonna try something like that. Um, you know, maybe with one of my birds that doesn't show a lot of hormones like Emma and see if I can get her interested in something like this. So it's a great photo, that's why it's there. So this is a fact three. When the first clutch of babies weed for African grays, females go back to nest to start the second clutch. Grays are considered cyclic layers and don't go back to nests re to replace stolen eggs. Most breeders don't pull the eggs because the parents are usually actually very good and it, it's not worth the time and effort for them to take the eggs for artificial incubation when the parents are very good. Now the male who's supposed to be guarding the nest and feeding the hen watches the female go back for a second clutch, but his hormones have subsided and he wouldn't be ready to fertilize the eggs on such short notice. So he needs a little time to get things going. Um, and on the bottom, cyclic layers means revolving or recurring in cycles. So whether a breeder has them set up, you know, two times a year or the regular cycles, um, starting in September, October, December, you know, November, December, that's when they usually go have babies. So can I, the way I hold my bird, can this really affect his or her hormones? Yes. How can I address this? To prevent inducing more hormonal behavior in your parrot, regardless of species, Keep to the safe spots to touch. Now, Bobby and John Paul look like they have it all going on down here, and he's doing a great job. I love the fact there's a child involved. He's holding the bird. He's sticking to the face. The bird looks relaxed. Maybe that's one of our future avian veterinarians in our future, but I think it's great to have the whole family involved and the bird, you know, around everybody, and he's he seems like he already knows what he's doing with the bird. As far as the safe spots, I was gonna spare you another hand drawing. So here we have Emma <laughs> and the, the spot you do not want to touch to induce any hormones is really gonna be between the shoulder blades, down the back, to the wings, not underneath the wings, stay away from the belly, obviously stay away from the, the top of the legs and the vent, and don't go down to the tail. Now, usually um, what happens is when you have a female, you'll see them squat, and that's because and she gets a flat back on her. That's because the boys are going to get on top and they're going to mount. 
So if you're down there and you're petting her back, you're petting her tail, that's that's getting her all worked up to lean forward and expecting, you know, you finish you something you obviously cannot and you should not be doing. It is okay to touch the head and it is okay to touch the feet. The reason I say feet is because you want to be able to have them groomed without being excited. So if you start with just maybe touching their little toes and then going down to their nails, see how they react. Emma's actually very good with getting groomed. She'll just lay there on her back. Again, she has a twisted neck and spine, so she's a little different, but she'll lay there and I can actually just do her little toenails without a problem. So here we have another good video of the correct way to really, you know, interact with your parrot if you want to touch him and scratch him. It's Joey. And he's really enjoying that little scratch there. And you can see he's got some pin feathers. Mary Ellen is going to go in there and there she goes. She finds a pin feather. And that probably helps him out too because those things are pokey. So again, this is where you want to stick to and really nowhere else. What do I do if my hand, my, my gray gets a little frisky on my hand? Again, we're going back to the first slide where I said there might be some, you know, tail switch or stepping foot to foot. Um, you know, if you see something like this starting to happen, you want to deter it, okay? So I've seen people say, put your bird back in the cage or turn your back or other, all types of other consequences for what is a natural behavior for a bird. It's not natural for them to perform it with us, but sometimes we're all they have and we're leading them on. So when this happens, I, set, uh, I suggest that people put the bird down on whatever safe whether it's the couch or the chair or a stand or something. And if Emma or somebody tries to feed me, I will tell them, thank you, but I'm not hungry. And I'll give them something else, whether it's a little ball or something else to distract them from the behavior they were starting. So you gotta remember, remember your ABCs, change up the antecedent if you wanna change the behavior. Some owners find this behavior entertaining or sweet, but these, these behaviors can become hard to manage and increase in frequency. In the wild, these behaviors are seasonal, but when the parrot decides the conditions are perfect to raise a family and continue their species, the behavior gets more severe. Please don't think this behavior is cute and let it continue. It is not healthy for them and serves absolutely no purpose. I can tell you being on social media, I can see what people think is really cute, whether their bird is on their foot or their hand or their chest or their head. And they let this bird carry on and they think it's so cute and their bird loves them. And it's actually, it, it's, it's creating problems. It's not healthy for the bird. It serves absolutely no purpose. So I don't understand why people let this happen. What can I do to deter these behaviors? Now, this is my flock. My boys are up front. You see the classic little picking underneath the collar um, for the boys. You don't see it on the females here. So I don't know what was going on um, at this particular point. I can tell you that Emma and Sam uh, have never plucked in that area since I've had them, which is great. Um, Abby will seasonally and the boys will seasonally. But having all these hormones fly around in my house, what I'll do is I try to keep them separated to the best of my ability. Now, if I have Sterling on a tree next to Abby and I see he's too active, I will separate them and maybe slip Emma in there because he's got no interest in Emma. So, you know, he, he decides to stop dancing and stop rubbing on things. And, you know, he finds something else to do versus concentrating on just getting to Abby because that's the little light of his life. And he's trying to create babies. And again, he's 40, so these behaviors just don't go away. Stay away from high energy pellets and food. Um, that is signifying 
it's great to have a great time to have babies. Um, they, can, they can have their regular pellets, but the high energy is what you want to stay away from. No cuddling or stroking, no wrapping them up in blankets and hugging them and, you know, full body strokes and all that. That's, that's only leading them on. Don't allow them to show affection to your hand or other body parts, just like I mentioned on social media. Just don't. Distract them. Put them somewhere near you so you're not condemning them. Um, I often say, just imagine if your, uh, your other half went to kiss you and you turned their head, how, how they would feel. So, you know, these are very highly sentient beings. And so you want to put them down near you and just tell them thank you and give them something else to do. Keep them off the floor. I've talked about this before to deter them from seeking out dark areas of the house. If they're on their trees or if they're on their cages, then they're not trying to get underneath the couch or trying to get in the linen closet or, you know, trying to dig a hole somewhere. It's, you know, setting up, you know, the antecedent to stop the behavior. If hormone if hormonal and exhibiting signs, don't extend natural light. Uh, that came out of a lecture for chronic egg laying and problems they had. So they, they had mentioned to try to deter the hen from having eggs. You want to want them up with the sun and down with the sun. No artificial lighting to extend the day to signify great time to have babies. Keep a balanced diet to keep them healthy and strong. So if you have an issue with egg laying, you don't have a double issue with um, you know, egg, having problems with eggs being stuck in prolapse and egg binding and all that kind of stuff. A happy and healthy balanced diet is keeping them healthy and strong. And don't think a mate is going to solve all the problems. Um, a lot of times, Two birds won't get along, so you may end up with additional issues to work through. Now, I know in certain countries, it is, I think it's a law that you have to keep two in a pair. Um, you know, these birds might have grown up together, they might get along okay, there might not be any issues, but if your bird's hormonal and you think going out and getting a girlfriend is everything you need to fix it, that is incorrect. Now, I will have to say there are certain circumstances where a bird may need to be offered a softer spot to be kept safe, whether it's recovering from surgery or has some issues. Some birds with disabilities find comfort in being able to lay down on something or, or softer rest. So usually with a disability, the focus of being on a soft spot or a darker spot is more of a comfort than nesting. Now, this is actually Emma. So Emma would come into bed with us, okay? She wouldn't come near me, wouldn't go near my husband, wouldn't start scratching, wouldn't do anything. She would actually get herself down to where the blankets were, and then she would roll over and fall asleep. So that's a picture of her sleeping. Even though she looks dead, that's a picture of her sleeping um, in the bed. And that might be because of her twisted neck and spine. I've tried to offer her a lot of different other spots to lay down and she did not accept them. So this is the way that maybe, you know, her neck hanging because she would fall off her perch um, from her head being so heavy and forward. Um, maybe this is, it was better for her and a relief to actually just rest for a while. So there are exceptions. Emma, again, has never shown any hormonal tendencies whatsoever, and she just turned 19. I would never try that with Abby, who is also always in the mood. So enrichment, it's important to keep the birds stimulated in healthy ways through enrichment. Examples of this include flock behaviors, foraging, and physical exercise. So this is flock behavior, okay? So the guys are all out and the girls are here too. This is before I moved the room in the cage. Uh, their, their cage is in the room. 
And so here you can see we have Sam, Sydney in the middle, Emma to the left, Sterling to the left. They're all preening. So they're doing it together, flock behavior. Eating is actually a flock behavior. Um, they'll tend to eat more or try more things. Now, I usually have to stand. These are the three girls, and they're pretty decent towards each other. I have to really stand there and watch, though, because Abby likes to steal everybody else's plate and pull them over. So I have to keep pulling them over so she stays on her own plate. That's why I tell a lot of people if they're trying to introduce new foods, if you want to pretend that you're eating something and you also want to, you know, if you only have one bird, you want to try um, offering it to them and act like you're eating as well. And a lot of times it's, it's more easily acceptable that way. Here are some foraging ideas. These are very simple. I made these. So in these cups here, you can see I had a little sola in the middle. Um, in between the cupcake paper, I have sola. Mm -hmm. Up here in the cups would have lid. That's actually paper and you can put nuts in there. So foraging doesn't have to be some really super expensive, hard to clean toy. It can be something very simple and something you could do yourself. And again, having something like this is going to deter them. So if they're in a mood and they're dancing and all of a sudden you give them a cup or you give them a, cake, a cupcake paper with something inside, they distract. So here is flying. This is exercise. Okay. And she's flying right to her tree and she does it every time. Okay, so there's all things the birds need to be doing to keep them busy. Now, instead of offering boxes to climb in, I see a lot of people with, you know, different types of boxes and different things to climb in. I know they like to chew cardboard. There's a lot of cardboard on toys. So what you want to do is you want to take that box and cut it up, maybe put it on some paper string, some leather, safe leather, untanned leather, or even on a skewer, you can repurpose a safe chain if you wish to do that. But there's so many other options to offer them that, that cardboard versus physically letting them get inside to create a nest, to create um, more hormones to get them going. And lastly, remove anything that may be stimulating for nesting behavior, such as the boxes, cabinets, huts, and other places can serve as a perfect nest. Don't offer items to line the nest either. I kind of like, you know, paper or there's actually stuff to for nesting. Don't use stuff like that. Dark places are such a, in the bathroom, I see a lot of birds, a lot of grays actually going into bathrooms and people thinking it's cute because they can't use their own bathroom and then they decide they're going to close the door and then the birds chewing the molding on the door trying to get in. So you have to stop the behavior and deter it before it starts. You know, under the bed, them running out and biting feet because they're, pet, they're protecting their nest. And in the wild, that's what they do, but we can't be having that in our house. So it's always best to stop the behavior before it starts and yet understand their natural behaviors. We're not going to completely get that out of them because it's a natural behavior and desire to reproduce. So now we have the last video here is Abigail. And she has a fixation with this drawer here. Um, I opened it probably two inches one day and she just slid right off and I had a hard time getting her off out of there because she wanted to bite, she wanted to carry on. It was not fun. So I have to be aware of where she is because she will fly there if she knows that I'm gonna open something up. So this is her watching that drawer to see how wide it could be before she can get in. And you have to be aware of that so I can prevent it. She's thinking, okay, another half inch and I'm in. So you do have to be careful. Now I wanna thank everybody who submitted their pictures. 
uh, for me to use today. These are members of my gray page on, on social media. And also to Dr. Anthony Pilney for, for answering some of my questions and Jean Patterson, known as the African queen who was very helpful with all of my breeding questions to make sure I had everything right to send over to you guys. So I wanna thank everybody and we can open it up for questions. Uh, so well, Lisa, I think we'll have to, um, we'll send the questions to you. If you we'll just, we'll email uh, answers to the questions if you don't mind. Um, okay. Since we, uh, but but I, I, one I wanna thank, I wanna thank, um, those who helped uh, walk to, walk us through some of the IT issues, I uh, appreciate that. Um, and thank you, Lisa, for plugging along after that little hiccup. But I, I think everyone, and I'm, uh, I think it speaks a lot to your draw, the, to you being on today's webinar, that um, everyone stuck around while while waiting for, for you to come back. So, <laughs> well, I I am very thankful, and I apologize sincerely. Um, Sometimes you can't control the weather, right? And you oftentimes can't control the internet. It's just like trying to control the weather in many ways. So. Exactly. So I want to, I appreciate it. And thank you everybody for sticking with me. All right. Um, now that was, uh, and, and we will have, um, let's see that, that, that slide will be, uh, maybe we can upload that somewhere, but this, the webinar, you know, once again, if you, if you go on the, the La Vibra YouTube channel, you can, you can see the slides. Um, uh, through through rewatching that webinar as well as our previous ones and just want to say that next friday we're going to be on with dr uh, tom tolley with ask the vet so um if you have any questions about your bird's health you want to join us then and then i uh, just want to give you a very special sneak peek at what we have coming up on april 1st uh, we're going to have um dr scott eccles rejoin us uh, he's going to give us an update on the um, uh, anatomy research project that he and his team have been working on. And if you haven't had a chance to watch the, the first time he was on with us, I highly recommend that you check out that uh, webinar because it is some fascinating stuff that you will not see anywhere else. Or um, it's just groundbreaking research that's super exciting. He's going to revisit the topic with us on April 1st. So um, uh, definitely got to check that out. And, Let's see. Oh, there we go. <laughs> we got the wait. Who is adding that? Uh, this is Sterling, my little hormonal guy. Now you can see real quick. You'll see him with his beak. He's yeah. uh, doing that with his beak, and you'll see that he's moving a little bit on my hands. It's very, there he goes he, from foot to foot. Okay, yeah. so that's when he starts his hormonal behavior. He's being interrupted because he can hear and see you. So he's, he's actually standing here talking to you as well in the middle of all that. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> he's like, hey. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, there you go. That's just what you were talking about earlier. And now he's demonstrating it for us. So thank yeah. you, really, for that. <laughs> Ready? What do you say? You don't say anything? Okay. <laughs> See, another thing is I don't want to get off your hand. No, no, come on. There you go. You're rolling. All right. <laughs> On that note, everybody, uh, thanks for hanging in there with us today. And um, Lisa, we'll see you back here sometime in the short future, uh, near future, um, with another great topic. And everyone, uh, until next time, uh, have a great weekend. Um, all the best to you and your flock, and everybody stay safe. Until next Thank time. You. Bye. Bye.